I wasn't successful because of who I was. Like in a lot of y'all for real, here's what you gotta stop doing. You hold people to the fire when they don't do what they're supposed to do, but you give yourself a pass. Like, and you gotta stop doing that. Like I see in this generation, people will let their kids get away with stuff that I know you wouldn't let nobody else's kid get away with. But sometimes when you're so close to something, you don't treat it in the, you don't, you don't treat it real. Like you give it a pass because it's your, it's your baby. But if somebody else was to get on your couch and do that, you'd have a fit or somebody. So what I had to start doing was saying, you got to stop holding other people to the fire. You got to hold yourself to the fire. And I realized that without a schedule, I was the one that was messing up my life. And I realized I needed a schedule because I wasn't, I wasn't the, the brand to get me where I wanted to go, if that makes sense. Like that version of Eric Thomas would never make me a one percenter. I realized that. So when I sat down with Warren Buffett, three things that blew my mind. I never really realized where his money came from. So the first thing I did was I was like, yo, his money comes from investments. Well, what happened was when he was 12 years old, his father gave him his first like grand and let him make an investment. So I realized he's not getting up early in the morning just to get up in the morning. What he says he does is he reads. He doesn't just read books. That's not what he does. He reads financial reports. So this dude was telling me he read a financial report of General Motors in like 1964. And I'm thinking like, why would you be reading? It's 2014. He was reading the document, the financial, listen to me. He's a financial genius. What was he reading? Finances. For real, y'all be coming up to me like, yo E, what you reading? Why? You trying to be a motivational speaker? You trying to be the next Martin Luther King? You trying to be the next Mother Teresa? Why are you trying to read what I'm reading? Like, what are you trying, like, you trying to impress somebody? Why are you reading what I'm trying to read if you're not trying to be me? You, he was not reading Mother Teresa. He wasn't reading about leaders. He was reading a financial report from 1964 General Motors. Why? Because General Motors had one of their successful financial years in 1964. And so he was looking for the clues of what were they doing specifically in 1964 that can be duplicated in 2014. That's what he was looking for. So a lot of you getting up early because ET get up early, but you getting up early for no reason. You just up early. So be careful that your routine is pointing to where you're trying to get to and you're not wasting time. So I'm looking at Warren Buffett. He says he reads six hours a day. He reads, he reads financial documents six hours a day. That's the first thing he does. Seven days a week, six hours. But watch this. You go, ooh. When you read something for six hours times seven, that's 42 hours, right? That's 42 hours a week, right? I don't know how many hours that is a year, but guess why he makes the best financial decision? Because all he's doing is financial stuff. That's, he putting in 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 hours. If you're gifted in three areas, then that means you're gonna have to get 30,000 hours just to be like basically a master. But what if you did one thing and got 30 hours of information in just that one area? You guys got 10,000 in three different areas. So while you got 10,000, I got 40, 50,000 in one area, what? Speaking. And guess what the disc is? The disc is still going further into personalities. It's still the same exact thing. So I'm putting more hours on top. So the routine is important because eventually it's gonna make you a beast in one particular area. That's why you need a routine because you can't trust yourself not to get off track. That routine is gonna keep you on track and make you a one percenter.